It was John F. Kennedy who in 1961 challenged the nation to put a man on the moon before the end of the decade. And it was July 20th, 1969, that the incredible goal of landing on the lunar surface was finally realized. Sequence starts. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a lift July 16, 1969, 9.32 a.m. Apollo 11 thundered from the pad at the Kennedy Space Center. The mission went without a hitch. And four days later, the lunar module known as Eagle separated from the command module and initiated a powered descent to the moon. With almost a billion people watching around the world, Neil Armstrong stepped to the surface. Okay, engine stop. Houston, uh, Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. Rocket. It's one small step for man. One giant leap for mankind. Yes, indeed. They've got the flag up now, and you can see the stars and stripes on the limit. Flag up now, and you can see the stars and stripes on the limit. Beautiful, just beautiful. From the Air and Space Museum in Washington, D.C., our pleasure to welcome the crew of Apollo 11, Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, Mike Collins. Gentlemen, good morning, all. Good morning, Brian. In, in 20 years, have you grown kind of weary of being asked about this? What's, what's the story? Oh, I, uh, I don't think so. I, we really, uh, really enjoy remembering those very special days, and actually not too many days uh, come up when, when we get the chance to reflect on it. Neil, you are, are today, by all accounts, a very private man who kind of shuns publicity. Is, is that a result of the glare of your achievement? No, I, it's, uh, I don't really shun publicity, I, but uh, I'm not naturally attracted to it, so uh, I... Uh, probably uh, don't volunteer for as many, yeah. many jobs as some of the others. <laughs> Buzz Aldrin, Mike Collins, does it, does it seem like yesterday, does it seem like 20 years ago, or does it seem even more distant than that? Well, I've been thinking a good bit about it uh, this last year while I've been writing a book, uh, but uh, it still does seem like a good while back. Uh, I'm the first one that's going to reach uh, 60 in this group, and it's going to happen <laughs> during 1990. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Collins, but for today, how often are you, um, are you reminded of your achievement? Well, if I go out back and look up in the sky and see the moon, I, uh, I, I either I can remember where I was 20 years ago or I can uh, pretend I've never been there. And it works for me either way. <laughs> I'm going to assume that it was and continues to be the greatest achievement of each of your lives. And could you, could you tell me a little bit if it changed your own self-image, your perception of yourself in any way? Mike? Well, I feel very fortunate. Uh, usually in life, you're either too old to do something or you're too young to do something. And I just happen to come along at exactly the right time. So uh, my image has changed in the sense that I feel luckier now. I feel more fortunate because of uh, having gone to the moon on Apollo. Buzz Aldrin? <clears throat> I think going to the moon was one of the most fantastic things that happened in my life. It, it changed my uh, view of other people and other people's view of me, of course. And uh, and I had a little personal difficulty coping with that, but uh, I'm a much finer man today because of uh, growing as a result of all those experiences. Neil Armstrong, same question. Well, we've been given uh, many opportunities as a result of our experiences, and uh, that can't help but uh, affect you, and I think, by and large, it's for the better. Let's talk a little space business, gentlemen. The, uh, the shuttle program has, by, by almost general agreement, proven a... Uh, a, a a sad replacement for, for the moon missions. Since your landings, NASA's achievements have not been nearly as glorious. Are you disappointed in that? Did you think you'd be, we'd be farther along by now? I certainly hope that we would. Uh, about six years after our flight, we did a joint mission with the Soviets, and then for almost the next six years, not one American went into space. And I don't think that's uh, what a pioneering nation ought to be doing after putting together such a remarkable team that we did. So what's it need to spark it to the heights it enjoyed in the 60s, Mike Collins? Well, I think human progress is uh, rarely very even. I think it goes in, in spurts and fits and starts. And we've been on a plateau now for a while, but I think that's normal. I think it's time for the country to get moving again in space, and I think we will. Do you think the program lacks leadership, Neil Armstrong? Um, I was delighted uh, with the president's selection of 
uh, Dick Truly and J.R. Thompson to uh, head the agency. Uh, they're both outstanding, experienced people, and uh, I think the agency will do very well under their leadership. You three are, um, by all accounts, ever modest to discuss this, but clearly what you did was special. Do you think what you did was heroic? No, absolutely not. I think uh, you can find heroes. You find them uh, nurses in emergency uh, rooms. You find them a cop walking a beat, but uh, not here. Mike Collins, Buzz Aldrin, Neil Armstrong, I'm sorry to, sorry to leave you on a point of disagreement, but I think a lot of folks would disagree with you. Thanks very much for being with us. Thank you. 40 past the hour. We're back in just a moment right after this. Years ago tonight, Two Americans climbed down the ladder of a lunar module identical to this one, stepping onto the sea of tranquility on the moon. I'm going to step off the limb now. The pictures were murky, but the words still resonate. It's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin, 240,000 miles from home. Two decades later, the images of the men on the moon and the flag they brought are as vivid as ever. Today, President Bush led the nation in tribute and talked about America's future in space. NBC's Jim Miklaszewski begins our coverage. With all the fanfare of a moonshot, President Bush launched his vision of the space program. Flanked by the crew of Apollo 11, the president called for a commitment to put man back in space and keep him there. We must commit ourselves anew to a sustained program of manned exploration of the solar system and, yes, the permanent settlement of space. And our goal is nothing less than to establish the United States as the preeminent space-faring nation. Just... Welcome news for Apollo astronaut Mike Collins. We have rested on our Apollo laurels long enough. It's time to get moving again. The president's vision calls for construction of the orbiting space station Freedom in the 1990s. Establishment of a permanently manned base on the moon sometime after the year 2000. Then a manned mission to Mars. Perhaps a joint mission with European allies or even the Soviets. But the president's program has no definitive timetable or the money to pay for it. Critics in Congress warn that could abort the entire mission before it ever gets off the ground. Today, the president took one giant leap for starry-eyed political rhetoric, but not even one small step for physical responsibility. And the president's aides say there's no need to rush into this new manned space program, that in the absence of a bona fide space race, there's not the same kind of pressure on President Bush that there was on President Kennedy when he first committed to putting a man on the moon. Jimmy Klaszewski, NBC News, at the White House. The flight of Apollo 11 was the result of tremendous national commitment, years of development, and setback. NBC science correspondent Robert Bazell describes the American odyssey that put men on the moon. of the biggest rocket in the world. But America's trip to the moon started a decade earlier, not with massive power, but with weakness and even fear. As American space rockets blew up, one after another, the Russians orbited first Sputnik, then a dog, then Yuri Gagarin. Finally, on May 25th, 1961, President Kennedy issued a challenge. I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the earth. I, like many others in the program, thought he'd lost his mind. Through all the Apollo uh, missions, Chris Kraft was the director of flight operations. Yet in 1961, he thought it couldn't be done. We were a pretty long way away from doing an orbital flight, which the Russians had already done. And suddenly somebody tells me we're going to fly to the moon. Uh, uh, that's, that's a pretty big change in, uh, in the state of the art. At Cape Canaveral, NASA constructed a spaceport, including a gigantic building and the biggest vehicle that ever moved all to assemble and transport moon rockets. But as launch director Rocco Patron remembers, it took more than hardware. It took 400,000 people to put men on the moon. 
But one person doing the wrong thing could have destroyed it. Six years into the moon program, disaster struck. Apollo 1 caught fire on the pad, and three astronauts burned to death. That night as that happened, and we had that in our souls and minds, was searing, indelible on the brain. But we learned, and I do believe that that incident, tragic as it was, gave us the impetus for the success we later had. 30 feet down, two and a half, picking up some dust. 30 feet, two and a half down, straight shadow. Four forward, four forward, drift into the right a little. Contact light. July 20th, 1969. Okay, the Eagle has landed. Roger. It was wonderful. I've never been more exhilarated in my life. They've got the flag up now, and you can see the stars and stripes on the lunar Beautiful, just beautiful. Five more times in the next two and a half years, Americans landed on the moon. They set up experiments, learned to dance a kind of moon hop, raced across its surface on moon buggies. Then in 1972, the last two men left the moon. Since then, no human has gone beyond Earth orbit. Robert Bazell, NBC News, Houston. In a moment, how the world watched the moon landing 20 years ago today. It has a stark beauty all its own. It's uh, like much of the high desert of uh, the United States. It's uh, different, but it's very pretty out here. What had once seemed insurmountable was surmounted. With American imagination and personal courage, a frontier was crossed. The astronauts had earned their place among the great explorers and adventurers of all time. NBC's George Lewis on how the nation and the world looked on in wonder. All engine running. Looks up on Apollo 11. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other thing. Not because they are easy, but because they are hard. I thought that it was the most uh, spectacular thing that I had ever seen, and I still feel that way about it. Oh, it just made you proud to be uh, a member of, of the human species. And it was just... It was mind-boggling. The moon landing came at a time of disillusionment on Earth. Vietnam claiming lies. The wisdom of our leaders being questioned. The year of Woodstock. The year of Chappaquiddick. And even the moon landing brought a measure of discontent. The Reverend Ralph Abernathy of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference went to the launch of Apollo 11 to protest the spending of billions on space while the poor were starving at home. Twenty years later, his view has not changed. It is the responsibility of America to stop spending so much for the moon and start spending something for our young people. But in 1969, for billions of other people around the world, the thought of men on the moon was an enthralling idea. As a promotional stunt, later abandoned, a couple of airlines began taking reservations for future lunar voyages, complete with moon-suited flight attendants. Robert Cornelius still has his Pan Am Lunar Flight Club membership card, and at age 68, he says he'd still go, given the chance. Oh, I sure would. I'm uh, retired now, and I've got the time, and I'd like to see what's going on up there. So would a lot of people who peer into the night sky, marveling at the moon and at the fact that men actually stood on it. You can see all the little craters and all the little holes in the moon. And the American flag. <laughs> we can all see what we want to in the face of the moon. And because man went there, we now look at ourselves differently. George Lewis, NBC News, Los Angeles. That's NBC Nightly News for this Thursday, July 20th. I'm Mary Alice Williams. For all the men and women of NBC, thank you. See you tomorrow. I can pick it up loosely with my toe. That's one small step for man. One giant leap for mankind.